Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today I'm working on our P48 project uh, and I'm working on some of the little minor details uh, that have been on hold while I've done some of the major system work and major fabrication work. Um, we're kind of putting that on hold for a few days until uh, we can uh, come up with a game plan for how we're moving forward on some of the major stuff. Uh, so I'm going to put on some of the small parts that have been sitting around and uh, haven't been installed yet. One of the things I'm most excited to get finally uh, put onto the P48 is the filler neck. Um, as you guys may have noticed from some of the previous video and uh, maybe even some of the video that you see from uh, sitting behind me here on the intros, um, one of the things you guys might have noticed is that the uh, P48 has a pretty gnarly hole that's been punched through the cab of the truck and while I don't much like looking at it and I would never uh, hacksaw a hole into the side of a, a cab it does serve the purpose and uh, rather than reinventing the wheel and doing a bunch of fab work to fix that and clean it up to put a put a nice clean hole through there um, that's not something we scoped out for the project and uh, if it works we're gonna go with it it's gonna be covered up you're not gonna see it anyway so uh, the owner of the truck and is okay with it and uh, so I'm gonna be okay with it I don't really like the way it was done but we're gonna move forward so uh, what we've got here is uh, the 48 Chevy 3100 would have come with an underbed tank so at some point somebody has put in a behind the seat take which would have been from a 49 and later Chevy. Um, so it works fine. Uh, with the tank that we have in the truck is good. It's uh, I don't see any holes in it. Uh, it's not rusted. It's, it's got a little, little bit of dirt and some surface rust inside that I'm going to clean up. Um, but overall it, it works and serves the purpose and fits fine behind the bench seat uh, that's going to go into the cap. Uh, so, we went ahead and ordered some parts for that, and we've got, uh, we've got a filler neck that came with the truck, uh, along with the hole and the tank, and all we needed was uh, some pieces to connect all that up. We, we had the rubber hoses that came with the filler neck in the truck. Uh, I got a new rubber trim ring that will mount the filler neck into the cab, and I've test fit that into the hacksawed hole, and it, it fits fine. So we're going to go ahead and get this mounted up. I got new stainless clamps for the vent line and the fill line. And our nice new reproduction uh, locking gas cap that's going to finish it off on the exterior and make it look nice. So what I've got to do first is uh, get the filler neck and the rubber grommet into the body so I can set the length of our hoses, our fill hose and our vent hose. Uh, these were cut down by previous owners, so I'm going to clean that up, square off those edges, and uh, make it fit correctly so it's nice and tight against the body and not sticking out too far. Um, and once I get all that sized and fitted, then I'm going to pull the tank out, uh, clean the tank, and put it back in, get everything sealed up, uh, and put some gas in there. So that's my project for today, and I'm going to get to work. So the way I'm going to be cleaning the tank out uh, is simple really. Um, I grabbed a bunch of hardware that came off the truck, stuff that we're not using that I just have in a box here. Various size nuts, uh, heavier ones, some smaller ones, that's probably too small, and uh, some bolts. And what I'm going to do is toss these in the tank with some MEK. Uh, I know my can says lacquer thinner. It's actually not thinner. It's MEK. Uh, maybe a little bit of thinner in there, but uh, really the same, same type of stuff. Um, I'm going to throw these into the tank uh, with MEK. Shake it around real good, especially the uh, in the areas where I know there's rust scale. 
um, and run these nuts and bolts over that scale and knock everything loose from the tank. Uh, then I'm going to dump dump the thinner back into the can or the MEK back into the thinner can and uh, we should be good to go. There's not a lot of scale in there. Um, it should clean up really easy. Uh, I've used this on quite a few different tanks. Typically for motorcycle tanks what I'll do is throw that in there throw the MEK in there with a handful of nuts seal up the tank really well wrap it in a blanket toss it in the dryer for 10 minutes and uh, let it bounce the nuts around inside there you want to make sure that if you use the dryer method that you want to make sure that you pack blankets around it so there's no slop so that the tank can't travel within the dryer drum and get banged up but uh, for this obviously I can't fit it in the dryer so uh, I'm just going to use the old shake, rattle, and roll method and, and uh, get it cleaned up. Now, you don't want to use any uh, machine screws, anything with a coarse thread that might get hung in there inside the tank somewhere. Uh, also, you don't want to use any real small screws. They don't have enough weight to be effective, and they might get jammed into the tight corners and nooks and crannies in the tank. Also, make sure you count your hardware. Every nut, every bolt, have a total count and make sure the same number come out that go in. And then I'll throw my dirty MEK back in this dirty can and I will use a little bit of industrial cleaner inside the tank with some water, sloshed around real good, try and get all the residue out of there from the uh, MEK and let it air dry for a few days before I put gasoline back in it. So that's the process. I'm going to get to shaking. Okay, so the MEK has had some time to work its magic in there, cleaning up, loosening any grease and grime that was in the bottom of the tank. I shook it all, all orientations and uh, checked it with my flashlight periodically to make sure that things were cleaning up well inside. And everything looks pretty good at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and dump the contents through this paper towel and try and filter uh, the crap that's left in the tank. Uh, after the cleaning and the nuts and bolts and everything so they don't end up in my can. Um, always wear gloves when you're handling these kind of solvents and uh, safety glasses just as a splash precaution. The duct tape that I had covering all the ports was more of a splash barrier than to seal it. You're not going to seal a tank with duct tape, especially when you're using an industrial solvent inside the tank. It's just going to erode the glue on the, on the back of the duct tape and make it ineffective. So the point there was just to keep it from splashing out at me. I, I knew I was going to lose a little bit here and there, have some drips and drops, but I didn't want to be dumping out a couple quarts of MEK all over the floor of my garage if I could avoid it. So I'm going to try and pour this through the filter here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to change to a regular paper towel filter and pour, uh, pour the contents through here and try not to make a huge big mess. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so I counted my hardware. I made sure I got all 24 pieces out of the tank, the nuts and bolts. I was surprised at the amount of metal that came out of the tank. It must have been open when they hacked the hole into the side of the cab. And uh, <coughs> some of the metal uh, shavings and bits got dropped into the bottom of the tank. Um, you could probably guess from me having to flip it upside down and shake it that I threw a couple pieces of stainless in there without realizing it. Magnet doesn't work to retrieve it. 
Uh, but I was able to fish them out with my finger from the top of the tank pretty easily. So now I'm going to throw in some purple, purple cleaner, a few gallons of water, slosh it around, try and neutralize uh, that MEK, dump it into my uh, recycling jug, and then I'm going to let the tank air out and air dry for a few days before I put any gasoline in there. All right guys, so here's how the uh, filler neck came out. Uh, truck looks a lot better just with the filler neck and the cap on there. No longer do we have the big jagged uh, gaping hole here in the bodywork. And uh, it matches with our nice chrome door handle here very well. So I think that's a uh, nice little bow tie addition there to the side of the P48. So hopefully tomorrow guys the tank will be evaporated out enough that I can put some fuel in there. If there's a little residual water it's alright. You know gasoline tanks are vented and uh, they normally will accumulate a small amount of water. Um, that's normal. So I don't mind if there's a little bit of water in there but I don't want to I, I don't want to have a lot of water in there because once I add gasoline to it, it it'll be slower to evaporate off. So now when I sit here and do my updates, you guys don't have to look at a gnarly hole there in the side of the cab. So <laughs> I'm happy with that. Uh, every time I watch one of my videos, I think to myself, oh, that jagged hole in the side of the cab is horrible. So now I don't have to look at it anymore, neither do you guys. So tomorrow I'm going to take on putting our gauges back into the dash. Um, um, and I also have a center trim piece here that uh, the owner of the truck brought by last time he was over here center trim piece uh, that I'm going to go ahead and install uh, that the owner brought over so I'll uh, I'm not sure that I have any of the screw proper screws for it but uh, I'll try and figure out how that's supposed to mount what it should look like in the dash so that pretty much wraps it up for me today guys on the P48 project um, I'm hoping to uh, make some more progress here on some of those major components uh, just uh, it's going to take a little time at this point I think uh, and I heard from the owner of the 66 Mustang uh, convertible that I'll be working on next I'm probably going to be working on that uh, project here in the next uh, few weeks and I may have to put the P48 out uh, uh, temporarily so that I have room to work on uh, the Mustang and get that uh, get that car together it's been sitting for a long time it just needs uh, you know, brake lines and fluid flushes and maybe a clutch. Uh, it's a four-speed 289 car, and um, I'm really eager to get that project going. Uh, it's a family friend, and uh, I want to do a nice job for her and get that car uh, running the way it should and, and driving nice, uh, nice and reliable. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like the P48 project, please click like and subscribe.